In this part 9 and last movie of the series, you set a batch render process to render three different camera shots to disk. If the viewport is maximized, which if you followed along it surely is, press Alt-W to go back to a four viewport configuration. Also in the display panel, bring back the cameras into view in the viewports. There are three cameras in the scene as stated at the very beginning of this tutorial. Cameras and their targets have been animated through simple keyframing to move from one area to another. Leave the top view as is and assign a camera view to each of the remaining viewports. Set all camera views to use safe frames and make sure they are shaded F3. Scrub the animation to see the effect. The first camera is meant to follow the action early on. The second camera zooms in to get the action somewhere in the middle. And the third camera captures the punchline as the light cycle disintegrates towards the end of the animation. To render all three camera shots, you could activate the camera view and set up a render process in the render dialog. You'd need to render that sequence, come back when it's done, enable a new camera view and start over again. Instead of this back and forth approach, it's easier to use the batch render tool in the rendering menu. Here you can add a view and rename it to make it easier to understand what the view is about. For example, Cam01 would be an indication you are rendering the Camera1 viewport. It's important to press Enter when you change a view name to confirm that change. Next, you can override the presets found in the Render dialog. For example, you can set this entry to render frames 0 to 155 as seen from Camera1. This will take us nicely all the way into the second turn. You can also override the output size, but we'll leave this alone for now. Ultimately, you want to define an output path, a file name and a file type. Click the Output Path button, create or choose a folder where you want to store the output images. Give your file a name and an extension, for example, cam01-.tga. Cam01 is to reflect the name of the view you have created. All output images will have that prefix. The dash is just a separator between the CAM01 prefix and the sequential numbers based on the rendered frames. The .tga extension is the file type used for the render. You can use other file types such as JPEG, BMP, PNG or others. You either type them in or select them from a list. A dialog usually pops up with additional properties for the output file type. In this case, Use a 24-bit per pixel compressed pre-multiplied alpha type. It will work fine for the purposes of this tutorial. A good practice is to render to individual image files and put them together in post rather than directly rendering to a movie file like AVI. Of course, it's important to choose the view associated with this batch render entry, in this case, camera 001. Using the same technique, add a cam02 entry. Set it to render frames between 100 and 210. Notice the overlap between rendered frames. Normally you don't want an overlap so pronounced, but this proves that it can be done if needed. The fact that the prefix cam02 is different prevents any conflicts when rendering the same frame. Set an output for the rendering, named cam02-.tga, and assign camera 002 as a viewport source. Finally, add a third view named cam03 and assign it to render frames 195 to 600. Set the output file accordingly and camera 003 as a viewport source. You are now ready to render the scene to disk. 
But since this takes some time, a few hours at the very least depending on your system speed, you might want to do that after hours. At any rate, when you are ready to render to disk, simply click the render button on the batch render window and let it unfold. Ultimately, you are left with three TGA sequences that you can view in the RAM player. or that you can compile together into a movie file using a third-party application. If you already use an application such as Adobe After Effects, you can certainly compile your sequence in there. There's also a freeware application called Virtual Dub that does a good job of compiling TGA sequences into AVI files. Keep in mind that when you compile a TGA sequences into a movie file, you may lose some quality depending on the compression codec you used for the process. Some of the better compression codecs on the market include DivX, XVID, and H.264, but there are others. And so finally we come to the end of this rather long tutorial in which you have learned many different aspects of 3D making. You learn to create glow effects based on self-illumination materials, you learn to animate light cycles to follow predetermined paths. You learn to create and animate light trails and map them with appropriate materials. You learn how to use a particle system to blow up a light cycle as it drives through the light trail of another. And finally, how to set up a batch render process to render the scene from different camera angles. As always, we hope you have enjoyed this project and we'll see you next time.